Good morning, we're almost there, guys. We need spiral two. And hopefully this isn't um, too hard for you. I know there are two problems that we haven't really gone over, but here I am to help you through. Uh, so let's start. We're gonna find the slope of the line that passes through the points uh, five, negative seven, and negative four, negative one. So find the slope. So what we need to do is draw a fraction bar with those non-negotiable minus signs in them. We're gonna put y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, y2 simply means the last y. So we're gonna put negative one here. And then the first y, y2 minus y1. So we're gonna put negative seven here. And because of the minus and negative, we're gonna turn this into a, a plus. Now in the bottoms, we do the x's. x2, which is the last x, negative four. And then minus x1, which is the first x. Okay, so we have two little addition problems to work. The rules are if they are opposite signs, we're gonna subtract and take the sign larger. And on the bottom, we have the same signs. So we're gonna add and take the sign larger. So here's what we have so far. You are required as a ninth grader to reduce all fractions, no matter where you find them. So we're gonna have to think of a number that goes into six and nine, which is three. So I'm gonna divide the top by three and the bottom by three. If I divide the top by three, I get two. If I divide the bottom by three, I get negative three. And that answer could also be just negative fraction bar and then two over three. In other words, the negative can go to the top, the middle, or the bottom. So let's put a box around the right answer. And that one's done. Determine if the following lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay, uh, so parallel, perpendicular, neither is all wrapped up in the slope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little formula. The slope is negative A over B to find the slopes of both. Then I'm gonna compare them. If they're either the same slope and parallel, they're opposite reciprocal or they're neither of those. So let's take the top one. Again, negative A over B is the slope formula. Uh, and, or you could solve them both for y, which would be the same thing. You're moving the x term over, which becomes positive, so the opposite of x, and then divide by 10, and that's the b. <laughs> so you might as well just do this. So the top one, uh, um, negative, negative 6, which is going to be positive, over b, which is 10. Okay, so this is 6 over 10. And again, as a ninth grader, you're required to reduce. <coughs> two goes into both, so I'm gonna say divide by two here and divide by two here. So that is one of my slopes. Okay, let me do the other one in a different color. Okay, so I'm gonna do negative A, uh, which is negative, negative three, over B, which is five, and that equals three over five. So I'm gonna say, determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, neither. As you can see, the slopes are the same. So I'm gonna say that um, the lines are parallel. Well, that didn't go too well. And that is the parallel symbol because, and the slopes are, so hard to write on here with a mouse. The slopes the same, or equal, you could put equal. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go on. 
write the equation of the line in slope intercept form that has a slope of one half and passes through this point, four negative two. <coughs> so we want an equation of a line, which we know three of them. You know uh, standard form, you know uh, point slope, and we know slope intercept. So I'm going to, I have a slope and a point, so I'm going to use point slope to go to slope intercept. We've done this many times. So here we go. Y minus on uh, negative two is actually going to be plus two equals, uh, put the one half, which is the slope, and then X minus four. Okay, so Y minus Y1 equals M parentheses X minus X1. So we're going to distribute and then we're going to subtract away the two. So right now the two is still there. While we distribute, one half times X is one half X. And one half uh, times negative four is going to be negative. And I'm going to divide and then multiply. So when I divide, four divided two is two. And then two times one is still two. Or you can say one half of four, which is two. Now we're going to subtract the two on, on the left. Um, the two subtract away. So my final answer is y equals one half x. And since those are the same signs, I'm going to add them and take the sign of the larger. And I did not. Oops. Did not put a box around that answer. Okay, so there we go. <clears throat> okay, here's one that I, we really didn't get to teach you. It was in um, uh, activity 19, but it's still easy to understand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say M and N are squared. We do not know what M and N are, but we need to know how to represent them. So we have M squared, and then we, so I'm gonna, it's sort of like distribute here because that squared goes with both. And then times N squared times N to the fourth. Okay, now we don't know what N is, but we know that if we multiply two of them and four more, we're actually multiplying six of them. So I'm gonna simplify that to M squared times N to the sixth power. So these two, let me write that a little better. That two is not. Okay, let me write a little bigger. So we're going to put these two together. Okay, so that is your final answer. If we knew what M and N were, we could finish, but we don't. <clears throat> so that's as far as you can. That's why it says simplify and you can't solve. And you can't evaluate. Okay, number five. Solve the inequality and graph the solutions. Um, so I'm going to treat this like an equal sign right now. First, I'm going to distribute. Okay, so I'm going to write over here a little bit. Give me some more room. X plus six greater than or equal to. Two times one is two. Two times negative X is negative two X. Okay, again, still pre uh, pretending that that's an equal sign. I'm going to look, I have variables on both sides. <laughs> so I'm going to choose the smallest one now. One looks smaller, but negative two is actually smaller. So I'm going to add 2x. On both sides, this of course goes away and all I have is two left on this on the right hand side. Over here I have 1x plus 2x is 3x. And then I have plus 6. Okay, now I have an answer. My answer is 2, so I'm going to look over here and say, hmm, what's like the 2? Well, the number is 6. So I'm going to minus six. Oh, okay. I don't know why I did that. Don't ask me at all. Okay, so two minus six. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go up here uh, for a little, I know what I can do. Let's move this down a tad. Okay, over here, the six is subtract away. I have three X greater than or equal to opposite sign subtract sign of the larger and then divide by three. Let me 
I'm gonna need a little bit more room. So X, now we divided by a negative, a positive, so we're not gonna flip this inequality. Now we have to start considering, hmm, this is not an equal sign anymore, it's an equality. So I'm gonna put greater than or equal to negative four over three. Uh, now if we divide, three goes into four one time, and I have one left over, so it's negative one and one third. Makes it a little bit easier to uh, graph if you go ahead and divide it out. So the graph, I'm gonna put in zero, we'll put in one, excuse me, negative one, and then I'm gonna put in negative two, and I know that negative one and one third is kind of in the middle here, so I'm gonna do this, negative one and one third. Okay, now we have to consider this. Uh, we're gonna put an open circle at first, and then we have to decide it is equal to, so I'm gonna fill in that open circle. And X is greater than, so all my X or solutions are greater than, so we're gonna go to the right. By the way, <clears throat> the variable's on the left-hand side, which makes this go the same direction as the correct uh, the solutions. <clears throat> so that one's done. Okay, write the following equation into function notation. Hmm. So we know that uh, function notation has an f of x in the front of it, and f of x is y. So we have to solve for y right here. So we've got to remove the 4x correctly. We've got to remove the negative and the 5 correctly. So here we go. I'm going to minus 4x. We can move that whole term by subtraction. Okay. Now that goes away, and what comes down is the minus the five and the y, because nothing happened to it. Okay, now over here, now this four x is lined up with the 13, but that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, you cannot add or subtract a number and a variable. So I'm gonna sit them beside each other in a particular order. I'm gonna put the x term first, and then I'm gonna create a plus to go with that 13, because it is positive. So I've just moved a term. Now, we don't want to move negative 5y. We want to actually take off the negative 5. So that is being multiplied, so I'm going to divide by negative 5. And when I do it one place, I have to do it everywhere. Okay, so the, the negative 5s divide away, and I have y equals. Okay, I'm going to consider two negatives <clears throat> that divide each other away, and it makes positive. So I'm going to say 4 over 5x. Uh, Okay, now I have choices here. I can divide or I can leave it actually, but there's one choice that you have to make and to put this as negative, a positive by a negative is, an, is a minus here. And I'm gonna divide it out. I'm gonna say five into 13 goes twice with three left over. Okay, now let me say something. Uh, this is a fraction <laughs> and because it is a slope uh, of uh, rise over run, this would be easy to do. Um, knowing where this is on a graph is really hard. So, but I know exactly where that is. I, I'm gonna go down past two, but and almost to three. So leaving this a fraction is wonderful. Leaving this a fraction, an improper fraction is not so wonderful. Okay, now there's one more thing I need to do. Uh, this says function notation. Okay, so I'm going to just change the y to f of x. They might get picky on that somewhere in your math career. Okay, so I'm gonna put a box around that. That is in function notation. Okay, I'm going to uh, put a box around this. This would be answer along with this mathematical solution and the graph solution. Okay, going on. Yep, I've been boxing everything like I should. Okay, evaluate the given function. Oh, I need a little more room. Evaluate the given function for three, zero, and negative four. Now, because this is f of x, the three is the x value, and when I find the answer, that is a y value. So what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> follow right along here. I'm gonna put f of three equals six minus two, 
And then I'm going to write the one with zero, f of zero. Notice I'm writing them all the same, except that what changes is the x value. I could make this one a little better. Make it a little bigger so you can see it. And then the last one is f of negative 3. Okay, let me change color and we'll put the three in, the zero in, <clears throat> and the negative, oh, excuse me, that's supposed to be, that's supposed to be a negative four. Okay, negative four. Okay, and then we have to uh, figure out what all these are. Uh, it does not say I have to write them as a range, but I am going to. So uh, I multiply first. 6 times 3 is 18. And then 18 minus 2 is 16. 6 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is minus or negative 2. And 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. Uh, I think you're on the left-hand side of the 0, and you're going to go further left, so we're going to add these. Negative 24 minus 2 is negative 26. So I'm going to write these as a range. Uh, 16, negative 2, and negative 26. We could have written these as ordered pairs. Okay, so there you go. Okay, here's another one we really have not covered. Uh, but again, here I am, I'm going to help you work through it. So first of all, I'm going to take care of this right here. So I'm going to just copy x to the third times x to the fifth. In other words, everything in here is to the fifth power. Okay, and that, so these are the denominators. Okay, now the num, excuse me, the numerators, now I'm fixing to do the denominators. So let me draw a long line, x y to the fourth, and then y to the fifth. Okay, just going simple by simple. Okay, look on the top. I have the same number multiplied three times and then five times. So I'm going to say really it's being multiplied eight times. Okay, on the bottom, I have an x. And I have the same number being multiplied four times and five times. So that's basically nine times. Okay, uh, now we have something else to consider. Now, again, we just numerators, we consolidated the numerator answers, and then we consolidated the denominator answers. But now, do you see the situation? We have eight, the same number multiplied eight times, but we're going to divide one of them away. So it's the same thing as like subtracting. Here we added. 3 plus 5 was 8, 4 plus 5 is 9, because there aren't that many to multiply. Uh, but now we're subtracting, because if you divide one away, it sort of subtracts away in the exponent. So final answer, x to the 7th over y to the ninth. Let me write that a little bigger. y to the ninth. So you add, and then you subtract. I need a different color. Okay, that's what I did. And so let's put a box around it. Okay, determine the domain and range in the following table and state if the table shows a function. So we have three types of answers. Okay, determine the domain and the range. Okay, so domain. Okay, are the x values? I'm gonna write one. I'm gonna write two. Notice I'm not writing it twice. Uh, two, and then, then I'm gonna write the three. Okay, the range. 
uh, three, four, five, and six. Okay, now is it a function? Well, I'm gonna put a circle around here because that means it is a non-function. Okay, uh, so here we go. Okay, which equation describes the function that contains all of the data points shown on the table? So what I'm gonna first do is, uh, do you see the squares? Uh, if you have something squared, then you have a parabola. Um, so what I'm gonna do is look for a turn turning point. So I think uh, zero, one, two, three, this is going um, up, excuse me, across uh, to, the, to the right on, the, on an X uh, axis. Now look, the y-axis, is it going down and going up? One, two, five, ten. Um, it's going up pretty fast. Do you see how this goes up by one, this goes up by three, and this goes up by five? So it's going up faster and faster. So, hmm, I may want to consider those squares. But let's, let's find the slope, okay? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to find, uh, okay, this is adding one every time. And we're gonna see if it follows the same down here. So this is adding one, this is adding three, and this is adding five. So again, we talked about it just a little bit ago, but you can see that this is not going up the same, so it's going up faster. So first of all, we're gonna mark this out. Okay, now we're gonna try some points. Um, we're gonna, if we try zero, uh, do we get one for the y? If we put in zero, do we get one out? So let's do that mentally. If we put a zero here, zero squared, do we get one? No. Okay, so uh, zero squared does not equal one. So this one's out. Okay, so if we say zero squared and add one, do we get one? So zero squared, and it looks like we do. Uh, zero squared minus one equals negative one, which is not one. So I'm going to say that B is the answer. So what did we do? We uh, looked at the, at the slope and we found out it is not constantly, it's not got a linear um, motion. It's got a, it's going up um, too fast. And then we tried the point. We, we chose this point and we tried it. Okay. So that's how we figure out the answer. Number 11. Solve the following equation. Go back to solving. Uh, 7 minus 6d equals 3, parentheses 5 minus 2d. So I'm going to distribute first. I'm going to write over here minus 6d, 7 minus 6d equals 3 times 5 is 15. And 3 times negative 2d is negative 6d or minus 6d. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at both sides and think, hmm, what is the smallest variable? Ha ha, I noticed something wrong. They're the same. So if I add, one's not smaller. So when I add um, 60 to both sides, it actually makes them both disappear or subtract away. So I'm ended, I end up with 7 equals 15. And we all know that that can never be true. So I'm going to put, there is no solution. In other words, there is no number on the number line or anywhere that would ever make this a true statement. No solution. So that is my final answer. Okay. Determine if the graph is a function. So think of, I'm going to put a couple of vertical lines here. And you can see that those vertical lines only touch once. So I'm going to say, that it is a function and because it, it passes i'm going to go ahead and add this here you don't have to but passes 
VLT. So we have no dots above or below each other. Okay. Okay. Next. Okay, determine if this graph is a function. So I'm going to use my line tool and uh, I'm going to, okay, do you see right away that we have a non-function? Okay, non-function. Does not pass, who I'm just writing. I'll put doesn't pass. Okay, doesn't pass the vertical line test, okay? Okay, state the domain and range for the function from the graph. Okay, so the domain. I'm gonna ask myself those questions, how far left and how far right does it go? Well, this uh, arrow says that it goes to the left forever to the right forever. So I'm gonna say all real numbers. Or you could put AR in. Okay, the range. Now the question is, the two questions are, how low does it go, how high does it go? Okay, how low does it go, look on the Y. It goes down to zero, so we're going to say zero, less than or equal to, it does touch. And how high does it go forever? So we're going to say infinity. Okay. Now, uh, on, on a multiple choice test, some tests may have it the way I have it, some tests may not. Um, so they would have the variable first, and they would turn this around and zero, and you notice that this, uh, let me highlight this. Okay, this part and this part are exactly the same. Just two different ways to write it. Okay, number 15. Okay, graph the following inequality and identify one ordered pair that is a solution and one ordered pair that is not a solution. If I were you, I would have a um, ruler or a straight edge or something like that because you kind of want this to be perfect. Okay, uh, we're not used to graphing like this, so I'm gonna solve for y. I'm gonna move over the 2x, so I'm gonna minus 2x. Okay, and I'm going to say that goes away, 5y. Uh, greater than, I'm going to put the negative 2x first, so keep it in the right form, and then plus 10. And then I'm going to divide by 5, because we want just to, we want to solve for y, uh, y. Okay, the 5's divided away, so I have y is greater than uh, negative 2 over 5, x. And 10 divides 5, 2 times, plus 2. Okay, so we have it in the right order, slope-intercept form. And I'm fixing to use my line tool to, let me get a, a lighter color. Let's do red. It's pretty, it shows up pretty well. So I'm going to put the plus 2. I'm going to put that on the, as a y-intercept. And then I'm going to go down 2 over 5, down 2 over 5. Put another one. Uh, down 2 over 5. Excuse me, down to one, two, three, four, five, yeah. And then up to backwards five, one, two, three, four, five, up to backwards five, here we go. Now I've done all these dots, but I am definitely gonna use a line tool because again, I want the next part to be perfect. Now as I use a line tool, I'm gonna to look here and say, is it a solid line or a dotted? Let me go ahead and write that as dotted. Okay, and because it says y is greater than, I'm going to shade up.
Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I need a dotted line. Okay, one more time, you want it to be perfect. Um, so if they ask you a particular place that you will know, so notice I'm going to take great care in making sure this is perfect. Okay, I'm going to shade up. Okay, um, so I'm going to go by quadrants. So uh, this here's there are answers in quadrant two, quadrant one, Okay, and there are a few answers. I'm, in fact, going to change the color. You see these answers in quadrant four, but there are definitely no answers in quadrant three. So uh, that's not an issue right now, but I just want to let you know. Now, the, the question is graph the following inequality and identify one ordered pair that is a solution and one ordered pair that is not. Okay, so I'm going to say is, is not. Okay, and I'm gonna mark them. I'm gonna say the or uh, I'm gonna say the origin is not. And is I'm gonna just choose a random point over one up eight. Okay, and again, you can choose a bunch of points. Now we'll tell you this: if you choose a dot on the line, that would not be a solution. So over zero up two, that would not be a solution. So let's put that in here just for extra. Okay, so there we go. Okay, state the domain and range from the graph. Uh, this is a discrete graph. I'll put that, that is extra, discrete. Means the dots are not connected. Okay, now I'm going to uh, go up here because we did another domain and range. Okay, do you see this one? This one is continuous. That means the dots are connected. Okay, and again, if you were having to list all these dots, it would be impossible. So that's why we use this uh, notation. But down here, it is possible to list all these. So we do. So I'm gonna do domain. Okay, I'm gonna run across the X axis because I need X values for the domain. And I'm gonna stop at each of the dots and say, for that dot, what is the X value? One. Uh, for the next dot, what is the X value? Three. For the next dot, what is the x value four? And the last one is six. So there's your domain. Okay, the range, I'm going to run up and down the x axis till I get all of the y values. So going from the bottom, I see a dot and the x, the y value for it is negative two. Okay, pushing on up, I go past the origin, past one and I see a value of two. Uh, going on up, I see a value of five, and both dots are there, but I only have to write it once. Okay, so that is it. Okay, up here, every, uh, the whole thing is an answer, so um, I'm not going to necessarily box around that. Okay, so Spiral 2 is finished, and uh, I will see you later.